Have you ever heard of the phrase homie drop off? Well, it happens a lot in the ER. Essentially, someone drops off their nearly dying friend or homie in the ER without leaving much information. I bring this up because one of the causes leading to a homie drop off is opioid overdose. Once again, welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are covering Narcan, one of the essential medications you must know as an ER nurse. We are also going to touch upon opioid overdose, including signs and symptoms, and how to monitor these patients. As always, thank you for your time. So Narcan, otherwise known as naloxone, antagonizes opioids. This is important because as we know, opioids can cause respiratory depression and a decreased level of consciousness that when severe can lead to the patient overdosing and dying. Common opioids include morphine, fentanyl, oxys, or otherwise known as oxycodone, and illicit drugs like heroin. So when are we giving Narcan? We are giving Narcan when a patient's respiratory drive is affected, meaning they are, they are breathing slower and slower, or their breathing is ineffective, or they perhaps have gone apneic and are not breathing anymore. Another reason to give Narcan is when the patient has a very decreased level of consciousness from the opioid, a low GCS to where they can't protect their own airway. When this happens, there's also usually some sort of respiratory effect as well. Now, let's go into the signs and symptoms of an opioid overdose. Like we discussed, alterations in their, in their respiratory drive and mentation are common, including signs of poor perfusion and oxygenation, specifically like cyanosis. But one key sign that you will see is pinpoint pupils. So get in the habit of assessing your patient's pupils, especially those who are altered. Comatose are showing signs of ineffective breathing. So as for the route of administration, we have intranasal, intramuscular, and intravenous. Typically, the public has access to the intranasal device, but in the ER, the IV route is preferred. However, when the patient first arrives, and let's say they were a homie drop-off, and they at least told us, hey, my friend overdosed on heroin, well, while everything is being done to the patient, like managing the ABCs and getting an IV, among other things, the IM route, the intramuscular route, can be used while everything else is being done. For example, getting IV access is difficult in a lot of IV drug users. So here, the IM route, the intramuscular route, is a definite viable option. The onset will be within minutes, and the duration of Narcan can be up to 60 to 90 minutes. So let's talk a little bit about the side effects. Well, first, before we do that, what if you give Narcan, but it wasn't an opioid that caused the patient's symptoms? Well, in the absence of opioids, Narcan is pretty much harmless. It's not going to have too much of an effect. Now, what if you are giving Narcan to a chronic opioid user? That's different, right? Giving Narcan to a chronic opioid user. Essentially, if you give a very large amount, you will send them into opioid withdrawal as the body has gotten used to having opioids on board. So then symptoms will include nausea, vomiting, agitation, combativeness, and even tachycardia. Opioids are a downer when they withdraw. It's going to be all the upper symptoms, right? Like tachycardia, agitation, combativeness, all those things. There's also another side effect. Uh, there's a risk of flash pulmonary edema. It's a very low risk and it's not common, but it can happen. So just keep that at the back of your mind as well. Now, let's go into the dosing of Narcan. It depends on the scenario. Is the patient apneic and not breathing? Or, or are they just a little bit sleepy? Or, or are they breathing slower and slower but still breathing? So it all depends on your patient and your patient scenario. In a COVID situation though, 2 milligrams of Narcan IV will most likely be given because you want to reverse the opioids as fast as possible. And if the desired effect is not achieved, more and more Narcan is going to be administered. Otherwise, the typical dose is 0.4 milligrams IV. Of course, give it slowly if time permits and gauge the patient's response. You will definitely closely monitor these patients and you need to redose the Narcan within minutes if the desired effects are not achieved. I've had a pericode situation where I've given one milligram IV instead of the 0.4 milligram. But again, it kind of all goes back to you, how your patient is and how they're presenting. Like always, make sure you're giving any critical or emergent medication with your preceptor to ensure you're being safe. If you do not know what you are giving, you should not be giving it. Like always, the ABCs are going to be addressed first. But remember, this is the ER. Everything will be happening simultaneously. For example, while the provider and the RT are handling the airway, someone else will be connecting the patient onto the monitor or trying to get IV access. But you can be getting medications ready and in this circumstance, getting the Narcan ready to go. There is always something to do in the ER. 
So some questions you should be asking is, was this a suicide attempt? How often and how long has the patient been using? Or was it prescribed? And if it was prescribed, why was it prescribed? How long was the patient down for? If it was a suicide attempt, did they take any other medications along with the opioid? If addicted, do they have a desire to quit so you can help connect them with the appropriate resources? Do they know how to use Narcan? Do friends and, and their family know how to use Narcan? So those are all important questions to ask. So as far as monitoring, a key resource that you should be used uh, that should be used for these patients is entitled capnography. So you can monitor how well the patient is ventilating or breathing because let's admit it, the ER is super busy and after stabilizing your patient, you're not going to be able to stay and be at the bedside for every single second and minute. It's the ER. There's plenty of other sick patients to go around. So you're going to have other patients to take care of. So by using the end title and having all the alarms on, it can be a very useful resource for monitoring your patients. But you should still keep a close eye on them and check on them moment, like every so often, every so often to make sure that they're still good, right? On that note, though, if they're super sick, you can't leave the room. You have to be out there and stabilize. That's more after they get stabilized. So on another note, keep in mind that Narcan can last up to 90 minutes, but it doesn't mean that it will. So you have to be on your toes because when the Narcan wears off, if the patient still has that opioid on board, especially those long acting opioids, they can go down again after the Narcan wears off, which again is why it's useful to have the end title and to constantly check on them, constantly check on them. So if that does happen, more Narcan is going to be needed, which brings me to another point. Always have Narcan ready just in case for these patients, especially in the beginning. Even if even after you've stabilized them, have another dose ready just in case. It doesn't mean you need to have the, the vial open, but just have a vial handy just in case you need it finally let's talk about safety be aware as we discussed that these patients when they wake up they can be combative and agitated after the narcan so protect yourself don't be in harm's way of course keep the patient safe but you can't help anyone if you get hurt Finally, just to summarize the key points, Narcan is used to reverse the, opi the effects of opioids. Some opioids can be long-lasting, needing, needing repeating doses of Narcan. So monitor your patients carefully, use end title, and keep your yourself safe. When in doubt, ask questions and have your preceptor verify what you are doing, especially in the beginning of your preceptorship. Thank you for your time today. I hope that I was at least able to teach you one thing. If you want to keep learning, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description with my favorite being Sheehy's and the case files. As well, please take the time to watch my other videos. Also, if you would like to help support the channel, I have nursing stickers and a shirt on Redbubble that you can check out. Again, thank you for your time today. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive. Thanks, everyone.